Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to project number seven of 25 beginner JavaScript projects. In this application, we're gonna show you how to create this cool digital clock. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're gonna be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you want to learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you want to learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's gonna take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub Pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub Pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna create a folder. Let's call this one Digital Clock. Let's open up our Visual Studio. Let's open up the folder. Let's create our three files. Index.html. Style.css. And script.js. Like always, we're gonna start with our HTML. Let's click Shift-1, Enter. Let's link our CSS and JavaScript file to the HTML file. All right, and let me minimize this so you can see the changes that we're making in real time. Let's right click and open with Live Server. All right, we're gonna begin here inside the body. We're gonna create a container like we always do. So let's create a pair of div tags. Let's give this a class of container. And within this container, we're gonna create another container. All right, another pair of div tags. And let's call this one digital clock. All right, this is where our digital clock is gonna go. We're going to create a h1 element for the day hour minute and whether it's am or pm and we're also going to create two more h1 elements for a dash that's going to split up the hour from the minute and another dash that's going to split up the minute from the whether it's am or pm so let's copy this five times let's shift alt down one two three four five and let's just add a fake date and time here so we can have something to work with when we get to the CSS portion. So I'm gonna say it's Monday, it's four o'clock. Let's split up the hour from the minutes, 20 minutes past the hour, it's another dash. And let's say it's PM. All right, and one final thing we're gonna add is an ID to each one of these H1 elements. That way we can access this through JavaScript and we'll be able to change the time accordingly. So let's call this ID day. This is going to be hour bar one. Minute. Let's call this one bar two. And the reason that we're not calling this one bar one like we did on this one is because each ID has to be unique. And let's call this one AM PM. All right, that's gonna be it for HTML. All the first thing we're gonna do with the CSS is change the font, but I don't wanna use any of the built-in fonts because I don't really like them. So we're gonna go grab 
a cooler looking font. Let's search for Google Font API. I want you to click on the second link and go ahead and choose a font that you like. I'm going to use one called Pore One, this one here. And I'm going to click select this style here. I'm going to click import and I'm going to copy the contents that are within the style element there. And we're going to copy that and paste it here. And in order to use it, we have to change the font family. So let's go back here and we're going to copy this font family here. And we're going to paste it in here. All right, so our font is now of this font family. Let's also use overflow hidden. And we're going to change the background color. I'm going to show you a cool website that I like to go to to get ideas for background colors. It's called Conic Style. I recommend you bookmark this. And if I ever show you anything in these tutorials, I want you to bookmark these websites because they're going to be very useful for you as a web developer. So it's cool to have this website here in handy. That way, if you ever run out of ideas or if you want an idea to change the background color of your project, then you can use this website here. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. All you need to do to copy this color is click on it and you're going to paste it in here all right so our background is now of that color and we're going to get rid of this in a moment all right for the container i'm going to create a border just to help you see the changes that we are making here all right let's set a width of 95% and let's give it a height of the size of the window. So we're going to use 100 VH. Let's place the container in the center of the screen with margin auto. And let's turn this container into a flex box. Now we're going to use justify content center to place the contents in the center. And we also want to place the contents in the middle of the screen. So we're going to use justify content center. For the digital clock container, we're also going to create a border to help you grasp this concept of containers. This is really going to help you become a better web developer because you'll be able to create responsive websites. All right, let's change the width to fit the contents of what's inside of the container. We're also going to use margin auto to place our container in the center of the screen. And we're also going to use a padding of 10 pixels. So this is going to be on the top, bottom, left, and right. Let's give it a border radius of two pixels so we can have slightly round edges. And let's change the color of the text to white. Let's also change the background color to black, but let's hover over this and we're going to choose an RGBA value of one of the lowest settings, which is 0 0.1. And we can actually get rid of this border now. We don't need it anymore. All right, for the H1 elements, we're going to use display inline block. All right, that's going to place the contents in a horizontal row. Let's use margin zero on the top and the bottom, but on the left and the right, we want 10 pixels. That's going to separate the date and the time a little bit. And we're also going to use font weight bold to make the text bold. Let's also change the font size to 5 rem 
So each RAM is equivalent to 16 pixels. 16 times 5 is 60. So our font size is 60 pixels. All right, and that's going to be it for the features that we're going to add. Now we want to see how this looks in a phone. So let's go over to responsive design testing. We're going to copy this. Let's paste it here. Click enter. And it doesn't look good at all at 240, 320, 480, 768. And it looks good at 1024. So what we're going to do is add a media query to basically just make the text a little bit smaller and to place it in the center of the screen. All right, let's do that. All right, let's add a media query. This is going to be activated at 768 pixels. And the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the bars that we have there separating the hours from the minutes and the minutes from the AM or PM. To remove them, we're going to use display none. We're going to use text align center on the contents. So they're right in the center of the screen. We're also going to change the width from fit content to 100%. And for the H1, instead of display inline block, we're going to use display block. So that's going to place the contents in a column like that. I think that looks better than having to change the font size to a smaller size. It's really going to take away from our design here. So I think this is a better option just to change it into a column and keep our font size. Now, of course, once we get to the small sizes, like 480 pixels or smaller, we do want the font size to get a little bit smaller. So let's add another media query for 480 pixels. All right, let's change the height of our H1 element. Currently, we have a set to five rem. We're gonna bring it down by one. So we're gonna be at four rem. All right, let's go back over here. And that looks a lot better. It's not, the text is not too big for these screen sizes. All right, and that's gonna be it for our CSS. Don't forget to remove this border. We were only adding that to help you understand the concept of containers. All right, to display the time, we're gonna create a function. Let's call it calculate time. Let's store the time in this variable called date to grab the time. We're gonna use a built-in class that JavaScript has called date. And let me output this variable so you can see what it contains. Let's make a function call to calculate time. Let's right click and click inspect, click console. And this is what that variable date contains. So it contains the day of the week and all of this information. So we're going to retrieve this information with built in functions that JavaScript has. All right, the first thing we're going to get is the day of the week, but we're going to retrieve it as a number. So let's use the built in function get day. We also want to get the hour. So we're going to use get hours and the minute. And there isn't a function that's going to return whether it's AM or PM. 
so we have to figure this out on our own so we're going to check if the hour is greater than or equal to 12. if it is then we're going to store a pm in this variable but if it's not then we're going to store an am and we're also going to create a array with all of the names of the week and I'll show you why we have to do this in a moment. All right, and the only problem with the date class is that it returns the time in military format. If we want to use 12 o'clock format, we have to convert it. So we're going to take our hour variable and we're going to use the modulo operator 12 so let's say it was 18 that means it's six o'clock if we use modulo operator 12 that's going to return a six so this is how we're going to convert it to 12 o'clock format the only problem with this is that if it's midnight it's going to return a zero or if it's noon it's going to return a zero so if hour is equal to hour then we want the time to be 12 we also want to check to see if the hour is less than 10. If it is, we want to add a zero in front of the time. So if it's five o'clock, for example, we want it to be zero five, not just five. So if the hour is less than 10, we want this variable to contain a zero plus the hour. Otherwise, we just want it to have the hour. And let's do the same thing for a minute. So if a minute is less than 10, let's add a zero in front of it. All right, we have all the information that we need. Now we just need to place it in its corresponding H1 element. So let's get access to the day H1 element, which we gave an ID of day and we're gonna set the inner HTML and we're gonna set this equal to day names which is the array that we created with all of the names of the week we know which day number it is so we're just gonna include that in here and that's gonna return which day of the week it is all right for the hour we're going to get element by ID include hour and we're going to set the inner HTML equal to our. And we can actually copy this twice because the other ones are very similar. So this is going to be minute. And we're going to change this to minute. And this is going to be AM PM. And so is this. All right, and we're almost done. The final thing we have to do is call this function over and over because if we only call it one time, it's only gonna display whatever time it is when you call the function. So we're gonna use this built-in function called set timeout. And this is gonna call on this function over and over. Let's call on this function every 200 milliseconds just to make sure that we're getting the most current time. And of course, we have to make a function call to this function. Otherwise, when we first run the project, nothing is going to, the time is not going to display. For this, we're going to use an event listener. As soon as you run or load the project, we want to call on the calculate time function. And that's how we're going to take care of this. And there we go. It's already updated because we added this function here. And that's going to be it for this project.